Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and in September of 2016, Apple released the iPhone 7 and the iPhone 7 Plus. And in my hand, here I have the iPhone 7 in jet black. Now, a lot of you may be thinking, no, that's an iPhone 8, but if you've never seen the iPhone 7 in jet black, it looks like it's glass, but it's not. It's a continuous piece of aluminum on the outside edge all the way to the back and has a special coating over it. To show you the difference between the 7 and the 8, the iPhone 8 is an aluminum frame with glass front and back. The iPhone 7 does not have wireless charging and instead is just aluminum and then coated with that. Now, the iPhone 7 did come in a variety of colors, jet black, just like this one, also black, which is more of a matte color, along with silver, gold, rose gold, and then a red color later on. And they all look really nice and they hold up pretty well today. But since you can't buy them new or refurbished from Apple anymore, I wanted to talk about if you should pick one up in 2020 or later on, depending on when you're watching this video. So this particular phone, like I said, is in jet black, and I think it holds up pretty well with today's design. It's basically the same design that we had from the six and all the way to the iPhone eight that's still available today. And the design, like like I said, held up well, and this was the first phone to remove the headphone jack. So on the bottom, there's no longer a headphone jack. We just have our lightning adapter, a microphone and speaker. We also had introduced with this phone stereo speakers. So they're also using the earpiece for the phone, as well as the speaker on the bottom to give you a stereo sound when watching video. We also got the new capacitive touch home button or the the touch ID button that's also haptic based. So it's no longer physical and will no longer depress, but when you press it, it feels like you're pushing it because it actually has the new taptic engine. So that was introduced and that also introduced IP 67 certification. So it's resistant to dust and water for about one meter up to 30 minutes. So that's something that was introduced with the seven. We gained all of those things along with a slightly better battery. I'll talk about that in a moment. So if you want to pick one of these up today, you can no longer buy them new or refurbished from Apple, but you can get them pretty reasonably online. So on eBay, for example, I was able to pick one up recently for a relative. They wanted a rose gold version or a pink version. So I was able to pick one up for about $250 with 128 gigabytes of storage. So that's really reasonable if you're looking for something that's not the latest and greatest, but you want something that works well. And I'll link some of those in the description from eBay or Craigslist. You can get them refurbished from eBay very reasonable. Now the iPhone seven has the a 10 fusion processor in it. So if you have the seven, you'll have two gigabytes of Ram with that. If you have the seven plus you'll have three gigabytes of Ram with the large display and the display is an LCD display. It's a 4.7 inch display, 750 by 1334 pixels with 326 pixels per inch. So it's basically the same pixel density as today's iPhone 10 R and iPhone 11 with LCD displays. It is not an HDR display, but it looks fantastic. And also if you have a seven plus it's a 1080 P display with 5.5 inches and 401 pixels per inch. Now, one of the nice things about the iPhone seven is it still has 3d touch. So it's a pressure sensitive layer under the display. You can push and hold or press a little bit harder into the screen and you get that touch, res touch responsiveness. That's faster than today's just haptic feedback with touch and hold. So that's something that's an advantage of this display over what we have today. Now with the iPhone seven, there is an improvement over the battery life of the previous generation six S or six. And that means we have a 1960 milliamp hour battery or with the seven plus we have a 2900 milliamp hour battery. Now, along with the a 10 fusion processor, we get better battery life. So if we take a look at this particular seven, we'll go down to battery. The battery health on this phone, this phone has never been changed as far as the overall battery itself. The physical battery has not been changed inside. This has 87% battery health left. So I normally say after two years, Apple says 80% is normal. This is holding up almost four years later at 87% and it's charged every night, all night long and optimized battery charging will extend that life as well. But if you're down to 80% or your phone is saying it's not reaching its peak performance capability, you'll want to replace the battery and to replace the battery in these at Apple is only $49. So if you did buy the phone for around 200 with a bad battery, replace it from Apple and the back, the maximum battery health capacity will go right back up to hundred percent. And with, hundred percent, you should see about four hours of screen on time, depending on your use. This particular phone is not in major use, but 
the best time here you'll see using about 50% of the battery was one hour and 39 minutes of screen on time. So expect to get three to four hours with the seven, maybe four to six hours, depending on how you're using it with the seven plus. So depending on what you're doing is going to give you different battery life. Now, as far as the cameras, we still have 12 megapixel cameras, just like we have in today's phones. They're just not as good as today's cameras, but they're not bad. We have a 12 megapixel camera with an F 1.8 aperture. It's about a 28 millimeter lens on here and it will record in 4k 30. So it's still very good, very capable, just not as good as what we have today. The forward facing camera is pretty good. It's as good as anything we have up to about the iPhone 10 R, but you don't get an emoji or Momoji, but we have a seven megapixel camera in the front and it will do 1080p video. So it's still pretty good. It's just not as good as what we have in the latest iPhones that can do 4k, but it holds up well. It works well for FaceTime calls. And if you just want to mess around with the camera it works great for that now as far as the speakers on the phone they're nice and loud they work well and in general it's a good experience with the stereo it's not as good as the latest phones but it's fine for most people when you're watching video maybe you're watching something on here playing a game the speakers will be nice and loud and you'll have no issues whatsoever again they're not going to be as good as the latest phones but in general they're decent now the overall speed of the phone is quite good even though it's a little bit older doing things that you're used to doing such as messaging or music or maybe going to the app store and scrolling through will work just fine multitasking is good with ram management even though we have two gigabytes of ram we can go back and forth between apps go into the camera it may take a second to load but going back and forth to apps you wouldn't see a whole lot of reloading even going back and forth to youtube or something like that so overall it's quite good and then if we go into say an app like minecraft which was already loaded it'll take a second to resume and even on the latest phones it will still resume so if we resume the game you'll see we're in it nice and fast so no issues here we can zip through it without any problem and just play the game as we might want to. And in general, it's a very usable phone. The only thing that you really have as a downside compared to the newest phones is you don't have face ID. If you see that as an advantage, you don't have an edge to edge display and you don't have the incredible battery life of the latest phones. Otherwise, everything else is great. And I would still recommend you pick one of these up if you're looking for a phone that's about $250 and that you can get used or maybe Maybe refurbished from someplace. It will work fine and we'll get iOS 14, although I'm not sure that we'll get iOS 15. So we should see iOS 14, maybe iOS 15, but at least one to two years of support still from Apple. I wouldn't expect them to pull the plug on this phone for quite some time. So in general, it's a really good phone and I definitely can recommend it for most people. So if you're still thinking about, should I upgrade? I have an iPhone five, five S and you want to go to something newer. It will definitely feel faster. If you're going from say an iPhone five like this to an iPhone seven or seven plus, you'll have no issues. You'll see a speed increase, a battery life increase, better cameras, and you'll have just a better overall experience. But if you want the latest and greatest, of course, you can go to the newest phone. But there is one major advantage to this phone over even the latest phone, such as the iPhone 11 Pro Max. And that advantage is this has a Qualcomm modem in it. So what that means is you will have better reception when making phone calls. You'll have better access to Wi-Fi and switching between Wi-Fi and LTE because the newest phones have have intel modems in them that just don't seem to do as well while you might get a little bit faster speed with the newer phones qualcomm modems just seem to act better overall and you'll have very good signal on the newest phones so i would expect to have better signal here and if you're using it more for phones and communication this is actually going to be a better option in most cases at least in my experience and from what many of you have said as well so that's it for the iPhone seven. Let me know what you think about it in the comments below. Do you still have one? Maybe you're considering upgrading to one or maybe someone's giving you one to try out. Let me know your thoughts about it in the comments below. If you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, of course, I'll link it in the description as I always do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.